Hey everyone. So I get asked a lot of questions because I'm a lot of people's reptile guy. And a lot of the questions I get is, hey, we're thinking about this pet as our kid's first pet. What do you think about this? And I'll give my honest opinion about it. And again, it's an opinion for sure. Um, but a lot of people like the idea of their first pet or their child's first pet is a baby turtle or tortoise. And my opinion is, is that honestly, I don't think there is a good first time pet as a turtle or a tortoise. And again, this is my opinion. And, and in full transparency, this is like my fifth time trying making this video because I always just sound way too negative and I don't like doing that is more than I already do in real life because I'm already super negative and I try not to have that in my channel. Um, but the reality, again, opinion, that I think turtles and tortoises are not beginner pets. You need to have a little bit of experience with keeping this type of animal before you decide to get a turtle or a tortoise. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that and I'll get into that um, in just a little bit. But I will say this, um, and we'll, and I will say, I will say that if you're going to start with a beginner tortoise or the first tortoise you get will be one of these. And with me obviously is Boa Bob, our Russian tortoise. And he is one of the ones that I think you should start out with. But with that being said, number one, so when you first think of, okay, I want to get a turtle or a tortoise, you're thinking of one of two things, either a pond turtle or a tortoise like this, or like a box turtle. Um, Honestly, I don't think aquatic turtles are good pets for most people, period. Um, and specifically, uh, red-eared sliders are not great pets. I know they can be enigmatic. I know they can be good pets sometimes, but they get too large. They get kind of messy. They will fight with each other. Honestly, I, for the price that they have, I don't think they're a great pet. So we're just not going to talk about red-eared sliders. That's going to be the last thing I talk about that. So <clears throat> there you go. Aquatic turtles not great beginner pets. That'll be a whole other video. Um, so your first time pet tortoise. So keeping with my idea, you've had a couple reptiles or you've done a lot of research and you really know what you're getting into. Um, so tortoises, I think are a more intermediate to higher level of keeping because they need a lot more than like a crested gecko or a corn snake or even a bearded dragon. Um, Actually, bearded dragon might be a little bit closer, and I already think that bearded dragons are an intermediate lizard species. So they have to have UVB, period. They need to have it. I know there's the UVB, uh, you know, the fight and everything going on right now. Tortoises and turtles need to have UVB. They need to have large amounts of it. They need to have a good place to bask and a good place to throw and regulate. So with that in mind, they also need larger enclosures. Um, we've seen like the pre-made little like tortoise houses Honestly, I don't think those are large enough for most species of tortoise. Um, and you know, a lot like some of the most popular ones are the Russians here, and of course, uh, they like to pee and poop a lot, as Boabob just pees right here. Um, are the Russians and the Sulcata. Sulcata tortoises are not a good choice for a beginner pet. Um, I did a whole species spotlight on them. Um, go check it out right here. Um, but I think a Russian tortoise or a Greek tortoise is a good, uh, a good starter tortoise. If that's, you really like them, you've done your research, you know what you're getting into, then I say let's start with a Russian or Greek tortoise. Um, and we'll talk about those a little bit. So these two are a group of about five or so that all come from kind of Central Asia, Mediterranean area. Um, so why that's why Russia is not actually a great name for these guys. They're more like the Central Asian tortoise. Um, they come from this kind of Mediterranean area. So like Greek, Sicily, Northern Africa, all the places kind of around the Mediterranean, that's where these guys are found. So while it is a little bit more arid and they're not certainly an aquatic species at all, the humidity is still pretty high and there's usually a good amount of vegetation, even in kind of like the more plainsy parts where these guys are usually found. Um, which are kind of found in like nice rolling hills, plains, sometimes small little, like little rocky areas for them. Um, so with that in mind, just like the larger tortoises, they do like to graze a little bit. Um, uh, not necessarily like the grasses make up most of their diet, but they do make up a large majority of that. So these guys do require a very diet of either a, I know, Bob, he just keeps peeing everywhere. It's it's not nice. Uh, 
Oh, I'm really sorry about this. This is why, uh, th there's a lot of reasons, I guess it's more than just being negative, why this ends up being so bad. Um, Boa Bobby just does not like being out like this. They don't like being handled a whole lot. Um, and this is a prime example of what they do. Um, when they don't like being messed with, they will just kind of, uh, pee and poop all over the place. And, <sighs> okay, so, <laughs> hi, Boa Bobby. And we're back. We'll see for how long. Because, again, they don't like, honestly, being messed with a whole lot. Um, and realistically, like, being up on a table is not great. So maybe I should do this in, like, a tub or something. But um, with that being said, they don't get very large. So all these these five species, but the two most common that you'll find are the Russians and the Greeks. Um, they None of them get very large. The Russian is one of the larger species that you'll see most often. Um and they, with that in mind, that makes it so they're a little bit more easy to actually maintain. Um, a lot of, there's still kind of this, like, pseudo-myth that a lot of reptiles, they grow to the size of their closure, or they like kind of compact spaces. Um, while there are still arguments here and there, with turtles and tortoises, it's not really a conversation anymore. It's, you give them space. Give them as much space as you possibly can. And realistically... I think that guys like this need a 75 gallon plus size. A 40 might be comparable for a young one, but I honestly think a 75 gallon aquarium is kind of the best like minimum cage that you could get for one of these guys, for the Greeks or the Russians. Um, just because they like to move, they like to graze, they like to kind of roam around, they like to make use of the space that, they, that you give them. Um, you can give them some cover because they need that UVB in the basking spot, so if you want to give them kind of like a big, big, like, half log, they will make use of that. They will go under there, especially if you, uh, like, keep it really moist and humid under there. They'll make use of that. Um, give them a little pool for them to wade into. Um, like, one of those, like, little, like, little ramp ones. Um, with that being said, tortoises love to defecate in their water dishes. They absolutely love it. Um, the water kind of help. Uh, so, number one, they actually will absorb water through their cloaca. Um, and so when that happens, it kind of like loosens them all up, makes them feel kind of good. And so they kind of, you know, do their thing in their water dishes often. So you have to remember that you're going to need to do a lot of daily water changes and really keep that up, keep up on that. Um, so, you know, you've, you've done your research, you have the 75 gallon tank, you have appropriate UVB lighting. Um, you have a good basking spot, you have a humid hide, you have some good substrate. And good substrate can be um, like any of the commercial stuff like cocoa husk and eco earth and things like that. Um, personally, I've been really getting into a lot of the more like bioactive, more naturalistic substrates like um, Josh's Frogs makes a really good substrate for a lot of different species from bearded dragons to frogs to tortoises to snakes. Um, they have a really good lineup of stuff, as well as kind of your own homegrown concoctions like uh, play sand, not calcium sand, um, coconut, cypress, um, eco earth, organic topsoil, mixtures of those make really good substrates. They do like to dig a little bit, um, so a decent little uh, substrate of that, a uh, decent little layer of that isn't too bad. Um, they like a variety of foods. Um, you can give them a prepared uh, tortoise brand diet like Masurai has a really good uh, tortoise diet that you just kind of uh, wetten up a little bit and they can munch on that um, but their beaks do need to be chopped downing on uh, chopping down on hard food items so you need to give them some something for them to wear that down on otherwise you're going to end up dealing with like beak trimming and stuff like that so adding in some uh yep, yep there he goes peeing again um, adding in some leafy greens, like, uh, collard greens, turnip greens, um, try to avoid stuff like spinach and kale and broccoli. Uh, those actually, uh, contain things that actually help inhibit their ability to absorb, uh, different vitamins and UVB and metabolize that, that they need to. So kind of avoid those, but so give them some prepared diet or a nice variety of leafy greens and vegetables, uh, winter squashes and things like that are good things to throw in there. Uh, peas, green beans aren't too bad. Um, avoid corn, just kind of in general. Avoid corn for you and your pets. Um, but they they can be really cool. 
um, very enigmatic. I honestly would say let's stay away from box turtles. Those are frequently a um, a decent like they have a hat they have a popularity of being a good first time one. Um, they are omnivorous. They do like to eat a little bit of uh, uh, protein matter, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it makes it a little bit harder to vary their diet as well. Um, they need a little bit more humidity as well as uh, box turtles have a really bad habit. I shouldn't say bad habit, they're just doing what they do. They have a bit of a homing sense and they wanna to return to where they wanna go. Um, so they will just sit there and just try to go through a corner or a side of an enclosure that you have for sometimes years, um, which can be very stressful for the animals. So you don't want to do that. Um, the other thing is, because I'm mostly talking about the Greek and the Russian tortoise, um, pretty much every Russian tortoise that you're going to see is wild caught. Um, it is cheaper for people to collect them uh, out of the wild and ship and import them in. Um, the Greeks, more people breed them in captivity, so you see a lot more captive born and bred, so they're usually a little bit more expensive. So we're talking the difference between like, you know, 40 to 80 to like, you know, 150, 200 dollars, that, that kind of a difference, which in all honesty, I think that that's not, you know, looking for a first time pet, any sort of pet, you know, that's under 20, 30 dollars isn't really something that you want, period. Um, cause I don't know, it just feels like it, it somehow cheapens their existence to you, but I would say if you can find a captive born and bred, cool. Um, but just keep that in mind that if you have a Russian tortoise, more than likely it is an import, so you might have to deal with some like parasite loads and stuff like that. Um, although they are still fairly common. Uh, but with that being said, you know, if you do your research, you give them all the stuff that you need, they can be pretty good pets. And so I will say, which again, still to me, this still sounds pretty negative, but if you're gonna go with a tortoise, this is what you wanna get into. You really like the animals. I would recommend starting off with a Russian or a Greek tortoise so that way you can kind of learn their behavior, learn the kind of, you know, the things that they do to get that kind of under your belt. Then you can move on once you decide, okay, um, I've kept it for a while. I've now moved to a place where I can have a larger area. And then you can start thinking about keeping some of the larger, uh, more popular species like the red foots, the cherry heads, um, the sulcatas, things like that. Uh, just that don't necessarily make a great uh, beginner reptile for their specific husbandry needs and their size. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I know it sounds like I'm really ragging on turtles and tortoises right now. I do honestly love them to death. There's a reason why I have as many tortoises as I do. I don't have just two or three. I have a Russian. I have the Redfoots, the Sulcatas, the, uh, the, I have a leopard even. Um, and I would love to get some other ones too, but I also, you know, do my research, know what I'm getting into. Um, and I will not pull that trigger until, you know, I know I'll have a place to do it. Like I'd love to get a pancake tortoise. Those guys are really cool. Um, but that'll be a conversation for another day for everybody. But with that being said, again, I apologize if it sounded really negative or I'm just ragging on everybody. Um, I was hoping that the strawberry would keep him occupied and he kind of munched on it before we got going, but I guess he just wants nothing to do with it. He just wants to pee across the table and pee on me. Um, but hopefully you got some things from this video. I know, again, it sounds like I'm being bleh, kind of harpy on them, but I just want people to kind of keep these things in mind before they decide to get a pet. And that really goes with any and all pets. This one is just mostly talking about uh, the tortoises um, that, you know, these guys can be good, can be good pets. It's just that a little bit more forethought, a little bit more research, and um, honestly, more upfront cost than I think people mostly uh, initially think about, which is probably a good thing. You know, the, that initial investment kind of keeps you invested more in them too. Uh, but that's, that's just my two cents again. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please keep it civil, um, especially on these more opinionated videos and ranty videos. Uh, let me know down below. Email me at jz's reptiles, jzs reptiles at gmail.com. Um, if you're interested in merch, if you want to um, check out my podcast, keep calm, it's just a snake podcast. I'm doing my best to get some new. Uh, I had to take a bit of a hiatus from it. Life has been absolutely nuts right now. Um, but hopefully we'll have some really cool updates for you on that, as well as hopefully some new really cool guests to talk about, obviously more than just snakes. Um, once again, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.